So uh, one thing that Peter mentioned is that you know, right now it feels a lot like deep learning is really more of an art than a science. Um, and you know, my hope is that someday the field will move closer to being a science. But um, really the purpose of this course is in the meantime, um, what we, I think the best that we can hope for is um, if not a science, at least we can push deep learning toward being more of an engineering discipline. Um, and so what this course is about is really trying to take a step in that direction. And to kick things off um, in that discussion, I'm going to talk about how to think about setting up machine learning projects. So I was thinking about how to, you know, how to talk about why this is important. And you know, I, just, I really like this, um, this comic from XKCD. Um, so you know, we should uh, like do all these crazy engineering things. And it's like, yeah, OK, that's, that's pretty easy. But um, if we need our computer to just check whether this is a photo of a bird, well, I'll need a research team in five years, right? Um, so this is actually outdated. I think now um, with you know, Keras and TensorFlow and deep learning, you could probably, you know, a strong like, undergrad could probably do this in um, a couple of weeks. But I think it kind of gets at the heart of a lot of why um, setting up projects is so difficult, which is it's really not obvious what makes something a hard problem for computers to do or not. Um, there's a statistic that I found from a survey from Pactera Technologies that's 85% of AI projects in big companies fail. Um, and so I want to talk about you know, some thoughts about why that's the case, right? Like why do so many deep learning projects or ML projects in general fail? Um, I think to me the core reason is that you know, machine learning is still research, right? So um, I think it's maybe naive to say that you could actually aim for 100% success with your machine learning projects. But um, I, I do think that many projects are doomed to fail from the start. Um, this can be for a lot of reasons. I think many are technically infeasible, right? So you know, making a, a computer detect birds seven years ago. Um, uh, some like never actually make the leap into production. They kind of stay in the world of, of research. Um, some have unclear success criteria. So you know, they never even know if they're making progress because it was never clear what the objective was from the beginning. And then a lot have um, suffered from, I think, poor management of ML teams, which you know, there's a lot of unique challenges to managing machine learning teams, which we'll talk about in another lecture this afternoon. But what I want to cover this morning is, um, first, I want to talk through kind of how to think about the life cycle of a machine learning project. Like, what are all the activities that go into, um, into building a production machine learning system? Then I want to talk about how to think about prioritizing projects. So how to think about whether this project is feasible and whether it's worth doing at all. Then I'll go through some um, different archetypes of machine learning projects. And um, hopefully those will help you think through um, some of the implications about how you should manage those projects. Um, and then we'll talk about two things that kind of help you make sure that your project is um, set up on the right foot, which are uh, metrics, so something, a single number that you're trying to measure. And then baselines. So you know, baselines tell you how to know whether your model is actually performing well. And throughout this lecture, I'm going to use a running case study. And the case study is pose estimation. And so you know, we, uh, let's say there were a hypothetical robotics company. And we're um, trying to train a system that takes a single image as input and then outputs a position of, let's say, one of the objects in that image and its orientation. And so this is inspired by a project that I worked on at OpenAI. Um, and so why might you want to do this? Well, you know, suppose that we're a robotics company. And ultimately, we want to have our robot that's able to grasp objects. All right. And so um, we're setting up a pose estimation system so that we can use the outputs of that system as an input to a grasp model. Right? So it tells you where the object is. And then the grasp model figures out how to grasp it. So that's the running case study I'll use this morning. <coughs> 